Abilities in Pokemon have always been pretty hit or miss. There are some that grant huge benefits like huge power, which just doubles the user's attack stat, and then there are some like Kenai, which just prevent accuracy drops. Whichever way you slice it, there are some abilities that are just much better than others, but I don't want to talk about the good abilities. Today, I want to talk about the abilities that are straight up bad. Whether they actively hinder the Pokemon on them from being viable, or are just way too situational to ever work, there are some real stinkers in this game. So let's talk about some bad abilities in competitive Pokemon. But first, I've been waiting for the day I could finally say this. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I know a lot of you in my audience are fans of tactical games that allow for some freedom in how you tackle various challenges, so Raid is just the game for you. Raid brings console quality graphics to your smartphone as you explore nearly limitless combinations of champions and strategies to take on dungeon bosses, campaigns, and of course, the PvP arena. Raid is always introducing tons of new content to their game, so you'll never run out of fun challenges. And if you're like me, you're not just interested in how a game plays, but the lore of the world it takes place in. You can trust me that Raid has you covered there. You can check out Raid Call of the Arbiter, where you'll learn more about the world Raid takes place in and the various characters that call it their home. In the first episode, you'll learn about Artak, a mighty orc warlord who you can even use in-game. And if you want access to Artak, all you need to do is log into Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th. New players can use my link or scan my QR code to get a free starter pack with some sweet loot. Just hit my link in the description and complete the tutorial and I'll be waiting for you on the battlefield. Each completed tutorial actually supports this channel directly, so what are you waiting for? Try out Raid on PC or mobile devices, and thanks again to Raid for supporting this channel. Okay, before we get started, let's structure this. There are three categories of bad abilities I'm going to discuss. These are going to be abilities that are just straight up detriments to the user, uh, abilities that are too niche and need a rework, and finally the abilities that just have no competitive effect at all. And I'll explain why all of them don't work in their current state, and then propose a rework to them that I think would not only make them viable, but grant their users a fun little niche. So let's begin with abilities that are just actively sabotaging their users. There's only a couple of Pokemon with the ability Truant, Slacking and Durant. This ability was made in Gen 3 specifically to keep Slacking from being too strong, which was a pretty good idea. I mean, look at this thing's stats. It's got a base stat total of 670, and Truant just balances this out because it forces the user to not move every other turn. While this is fine for a casual playthrough of the game, Slacking struggles competitively in BGC because it's hard countered by Protect, which is super common in doubles. All you need to do to beat this thing is protect when it can attack and attack when it can't move. Now, I get why Slacking has this ability, but why did they give it to Durant too? Is it because he's a true ant? Yeah, you can use Entrainment to pass the ability to a foe, but they can just like switch out and it's gone. I have a pretty simple solution here. My rework for Truant is to apply the same effect as Unseen Fist on the turn that it is able to move. This means that Slacking and Durant are sitting ducks every other turn, which is still a huge downside, but it also allows them to hit through Protect for full damage on turns that they can move. I'd imagine that the explanation for this would be something like the constant resting allows them to just use their full power to break through defenses when they can attack. Next up is Slow Start, the ability of Slacking's distant cousin Regigigas. Now don't get me wrong, I get what they were going for here, but Regigigas has no shot in succeeding if its ability cuts its speed and attack in half for 5 turns. And get this, if it switches out, the counter resets. I mean, Regigigas would be busted if it was able to move freely, but this seems like overkill. We've seen what it can do with a mediocre partner in VGC 2021 when we are able to pair Regigigas with Neutralizing Gas Weezing to turn off Slow Start, but having to pair it with a mediocre Pokemon to see any success is a major drawback. I'd rework this ability so the counter is simply decreased to 4 turns, and make it so the counter doesn't reset every time you switch. Listen, if Rage Fist Annihilate can remember how many times it got hit before it switched out, Regigigas can remember how many turns of Slow Start it's burned through. This would allow for Regigigas to burn turns strategically by switching in and out on turns where smart board positioning and pressure keeps it from taking too much damage, then go all out and be viable in the late game of the VGC match. I have no idea why they did this to Archeops, but next up is the ability Defeatist. This ability causes the user to have its offensive stats be cut in half once it's below half HP. Do you know how easy it is to get Archeops to half HP? It's got paper thin defenses. A single Aqua Jet, Sucker Punch, Mock Punch, or any priority move will likely send it to half HP and then to half attack and special attack. This causes Archeops to be dead weight once its ability activates, so there's no real good reason to run the Focus Sash on this Pokemon like every other Glass Cannon wants to run, and Archeops isn't even particularly strong at full power. I think that someone just saw this thing and went, nah, this dude's ugly. 
give him a bad ability, and then they created Defeatist. Now, it's hard to rework this thing without completely gutting the concept of a Defeatist, he still has to give up, but here's my take. At above half health, the user should have a 30% boost to its offensive stats like it's holding a life orb. And then, once it's at half health, not only do its offensive stats get cut in half, but it also loses that life orb boost. Easy as that. This would make Archeops a huge threat on lead that the opponent has to deal with as soon as possible or they'll be taking far too much damage from rock slides. Okay, so Emergency Exit is a tragedy of inability, and I get what they were going for here. Golisopod automatically switching out at half health does have some decent synergy with its former signature move of First Impression, but now that so many Pokemon have access to that move, I think it's time we buff Golisopod to give him some real niche. Now at the moment, Emergency Exit is just a renamed Wimp Out, and within the lore, Golisopod is doing a tactical retreat rather than cowardly running away, so why not add in a passive effect to reflect this new attitude? I think Emergency Exit should also prevent Intimidate and flinches like Inner Focus does, while still forcing Golisopod to switch out once it reaches half health. This would allow for Golisopod to more freely be able to toss out first impressions on lead without fearing Intimidate and Fake Out stuffing its already mediocre damage output even further. The last of the detrimental abilities we'll discuss today is Mycelium Might. While this does allow for Toad Squirrel to bypass abilities when it's using status moves, it is just a straight up worse version of Mold Breaker. Not only does it not work on attacking moves, but it also forces Toad Squirrel to always move last, as to prevent a 100 base speed Pokemon with Spore from being overpowered. If we want this ability to be a bit more unique and not just a worse Mold Breaker, I think Mycelia Might should allow for the user to bypass type based immunities on status moves. This would allow for it to spore grass types, granting it a fun little niche in being able to counter Amoongus by sleeping it and redirecting its attacks away from partners. Unlike any other Pokemon, it will be able to redirect moves with Rage Powder from grass type Pokemon. Moving on to just super niche, not really useful abilities, I don't really know what to call these. Anyways, moving on to just the mediocre abilities, let's start off with the one that inspired this video, or should I say the two? Plus and minus are an ability that was made to be used in doubles. They require each other to activate and only do one thing. If a Pokemon with plus and minus are both active on one side of the field, then both Pokemon are granted a 50% increase to their special attack stat. Now this sounds really powerful, but it's never really seen because the only Pokemon with this ability are either electric or steel type Pokemon, meaning that they're weak to ground moves. Having your Pokemon, having both of your Pokemon, be weak to ground moves in doubles and need to be on the field at the same time to be at full power is just a recipe for disaster. Now, this can be solved by simply granting the abilities to a wider pool of Pokemon that aren't weak to ground moves, but I like the idea of this being sort of a high risk, high reward ability to make bad Pokemon viable, so let's buff it so the synergy gets even better. I want to keep the original benefit of both of the abilities, so if their partner's on the field, they still get that 50% increase in special attack, but I also want them to have a function beyond this. So let's make it so the Pokemon with the ability plus also have a mixture of Volt Absorb and Lightning Rod. This would make it so it would redirect an electric type attack into it and heal from it rather than getting that special attack boost, while the Pokemon with minus can get Mold Breaker applied to all of their moves. This would make it so their electric type moves won't be redirected by Pokemon with the abilities Lightning Rod or Plus, and they can still damage Pokemon with the abilities Volt Absorb, Lightning Rod, and Plus with electric moves. Taking a look at the pool of Pokemon with these abilities, this wouldn't really make any of them overpowered, it would just give them a little niche, and it would make Ampharos kind of viable in VGC. Color change as it stands is just really lame Protean, except instead of the user changing its type to the type of the move they last used, they change into the type of the move they were last damaged by. In effect, this will cause Kecleon, the only Pokemon with this ability, to get hit by a move and then usually resist that same type of move on the next turn, unless they were hit by like a dragon move. But having your type be out of your control is just not really super desirable and it's really easy for an opponent to exploit. I would rework this ability to be a mixture of the ability's forecast and mimicry. Imagine if Kecleon not only got its primary typing to be rock, fire, ice, or water dependent on the weather, but also it would gain a secondary typing based off of the current terrain. This would allow for Kecleon to become a pretty cool type combination like grass, water, fire, electric, or any other cool little combination you can do with that. And it would allow for it to be a really flexible Pokemon that finally can use its massive pool of coverage moves with Stab. Magma Armor has only one effect, and all it does is prevent the Pokemon from getting frozen. 
Since Freeze is the only status in this game without a move that just directly applies it, the ability is far too niche to ever really see play, and the only Pokemon with this ability are also very mediocre, they're Camerupt and Magcargo. I think a solid way to give these Pokemon a nice niche would be to buff Magma Armor to not only prevent Freeze on the user, but also its entire side of the field. Beyond that, with Snow archetypes making Blizzard spam way more viable in Generation 9, I think it's time for us to make it so Magma Armor also decreases the power of Ice moves on any Pokemon protected by the ability. This would allow for a little bit stronger counterplay versus those Blizzard spam teams rather than just KOing them first. Normalize is the signature ability of the Delcaddy line. All it does is turn every move the user uses into a normal type move and increase the power by 20%. I know, amazing, right? While this paired with a little stab bonus is pretty nice and causes it to deal some pretty decent damage, this is all coming off of 65 attack or 55 special attack from Delcaddy, so it's not really actually that impressive. If we want Delcaddy to start performing, a good start would be to make it so Normalize allows for normal moves to also hit ghost types, like the ability Scrappy. And honestly, let's just give it a 30% boost to its power rather than that 20. I mean, come on, how far is this thing gonna go with a million Tri-Attack and Body Slam clones? Let it at least hit a little harder. Stall is the signature ability of Sableye, and I, I couldn't tell you why. It's such a bad ability, dude. All this thing does is make it so Sableye moves last in its priority bracket, and while that could be useful in some situations, it's just a built-in lagging tail. All you can really do with this ability is skill swap it away, but you could also just run Prankster Trick Lagging Tail, which does the exact same thing, but it's better because you're a Prankster Pokemon, and the effect is permanently applied to the target instead of just wearing off as soon as they switch. I propose that along with its current effect, it also gives the Pokemon a guaranteed Focus Band effect once per game. No, not the Focus Sash, the Band. This would mean that whenever Sableye is about to go down, it will survive on 1 HP, stalling the game for an extra turn. This would allow for Sableye to do some pretty crazy stuff, like survive long enough to be a win condition for teams that rely on stall tactics like Parish Song or Toxic. Alright. With those abilities out of the way, let's get into the This ability has no effect during battle lightning round. Here, I'll rapid fire some effects that we can add to the abilities that were created to do stuff like running away or picking up honey. Anyways, let's get started. Run away should be given the effect of a shed shell. This means that not only does it allow for Pokemon to guaranteed run away from battles during the story, but it would also make it so these Pokemon can't be trapped by Bind, Sandtomb, Arena Trap, or Shadow Tag. The fact that this wasn't already applied to the move is just absurd, it's, it's so obvious. Honey Gather should allow the opponent to steal the opponent's berry when it uses up its own item, kind of like Harvest, but just with a little bit more crime. Illuminate should grant the user a 10% increase to move accuracy, but this effect shouldn't apply to its partners as to not step on Victini's toes. Finally, Ball Fetch should just I, I, I don't know, this one I'm kind of workshopping because I couldn't think of anything. Um, maybe when you use Fling, it goes and gets the item and gives it back to the partner. I, I don't know, it could be cool. That's, it's, it's a weird one. It picks up Pokeballs during battle. Pokeballs don't get used during BGC tournaments. So I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below what you would do with that one. But on a final note, Klutz as an ability is fine. It's, it's just that funny. Let's keep it the same. With that, I've covered the worst abilities in competitive Pokemon. Let me know if I missed any in the comment section down below, and be sure to click that sponsor link while you're down there to support this channel. If you want to support my content even more, you can check out the link to my Patreon to help me create even more videos like this. All these lovely people on screen have already done that. But just know that leaving a like on the video and subscribing is more than enough to help me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.